Welcome to my lectern line. Let's just finish off the set and call the first 10 of the alkanes important enough to mention here. So we have number 9 and number 10. The one with 9 carbons is called nonane, and it has 9 carbons and 20 hydrogens. Notice that the boiling point continues to increase as you have more and more carbons in the chain. Here we have a boiling point of 150.8 degrees centigrade before the liquid turns into a gas. Also, with more and more carbons in the chain, the number of isomers increases almost exponentially, and now with nine carbons, we're at 35 isomers, meaning there's 35 different structures that contain nine carbons and 20 hydrogens. We use nonane as a component in kerosene. Now, I remember as a kid, my grandparents had a little kerosene heater that they carried around. Uh, we put that into the bathroom, which ended up being like a little stall outside, very cold in the wintertime, and they put on the little kerosene heater to make it possible to take showers in the wintertime. So a kerosene is primarily made out of nonane and also decane. We use it also in tractor and jet fuels, and it's used as a solvent and also in fuel additives and interestingly enough, in biodegradable detergents. So there's all kinds of uses we get out of those various uh, compounds, organic compounds. When we get to decane, notice we now have 10 carbons and 22 hydrogens, boiling point a little higher again at 174 degrees centigrade. And notice there's 75 different isomers, and we're not going to try and find all of them. We'll learn how to go through the process of finding them, but that would take a lot of work, especially since there are more and more, as you have more and more isomers, you're going to find the different structures that look different but actually are the same, and it gets very complicated after a while. Notice again that decane is also used as a component of kerosene and as gasoline, although a minor component of gasoline. And once you get up to the higher numbers of carbon atoms in a chain, you begin to notice that many of the isomers have similar properties, so they don't diverge too much in the various properties of boiling point and so forth, the interaction uh, when it comes to um, the various isomers. So we'll also look at how much energy you need to put the isomers together, put the components together. We'll look at how much energy you get out of it by burning it and so forth, but that is for later videos. So now you have a pretty good idea what the first 10 chains look like in the alkane group and some ideas of what those components are used for. And that's how we slowly get through the understanding of all the various hydrocarbons and all the various organic molecules in the various categories.